Brittany Richmond here with the Speaker Lab. Let's talk about something super important. Um, I really quick wanted to touch really quick. I'm a speaker with no words. Let's really quick touch on the speak framework. Okay, so this is our foundation and our framework of what it means to have that foundation, right? Like I said that, how many times can she say the word foundation? Uh, keep track and uh, the winner at the end gets a prize. Um, just kidding. <laughs> there might be a test. Um, it is the foundation to what we do and how we help people grow, start, grow, or scale speaking businesses is making sure this foundation is absolutely solid. And no matter at what point we work with someone, whether they've never spoke a day in their life and they're just starting or they are getting booked but maybe not paid consistently or they're a six-figure earning speaker looking to scale upwards of seven, we still go through and check all these boxes, okay? It's really important that this foundation is absolutely solid. So step one is S, it spells out speak, okay? On the nose, right? Totally on the nose, you're never gonna forget it now. So we did that almost like on purpose, right? Almost like on purpose. But S is in speak, select a problem to solve. So this is absolutely critical to be step one because if we don't have clarity in step one, it is so much more difficult so much more difficult to move on to the other steps, right? So what this means is clarity on who you speak to and what do you speak about, or in other words, what problem do you solve for that audience? So I'll use myself for an example. I speak to two high school students on overcoming and managing anxiety. Very specific. Um, we we want to serve one specific audience with one specific problem, right? That's what we want to do. Now, I want to be very clear. I it Sometimes it's we think we're niche down and we're not, okay? We can actually go a little deeper. And I'll give you an example with my own example is I did not say that I speak to youth on mental health. Youth and mental health sound niche down. I mean, they are just a little, just a little bit, just a little bit, but we can obviously go deeper because youth, if you Google it, and again, Google it because and this is the gospel according to Google, is youth means like five to 35 years old. So that's kind of a wide range, right? There's a lot of different phases of life in there. So it's not youth that I speak to, it's high school students, that's much more specific, right? And I did not say mental health. Mental health, think about that. There's so much that falls under that umbrella. I specialize in overcoming and managing anxiety. Why is this so critical? At the end of the day, the bottom line is this, that people book and pay specialists, not generalists, right? We don't wanna be a generalist, friends. We don't wanna be the Cheesecake Factory. We wanna be in and out Burger. What do I mean by that? I just posted a video of this on our Instagram. So you go to the Cheesecake Factory, you open up their menu, it's a novel. If you've ever been to Cheesecake Factory, you're shaking your head yes right now, I know you are, okay? And it's true, it's a novel, they do Chinese, Burgers, steak, pasta, dessert. I mean, they have every type of food you could ever possibly want to eat at the Cheesecake Factory. They don't have that much cheesecake on the menu, ironically, in my uh, remembrance. <laughs> so something to look into there. But um, In-N-Out Burger does one thing and there's always a demand, there's always a line. People love In-N-Out Burger. Why? They do one thing and they do it really well burgers okay so you want to be in an out burger okay be in an out burger friends and now you're craving in an out burger i definitely am i live in a place where we don't have in an out burger so i live in central illinois which we don't have whataburger in an out burger shake shack we have nothing fun okay so i'm super jealous if you have all of those things local to you when i travel to speak i make sure i hit up these places okay anyway sidebar let's go to step two which is p Preparing your talk, SP. Once we have clarity in step one, we can move on to step two, which is putting together your signature talk from intros to outros to transitions to stage crafting. You know, I told y'all multiple times, I practice in front of this mirror before engagements, right? That's important to, to do that. So what makes a great talk? Um, this is your best marketing tool, so it, it's gotta be great. So it should answer two questions for your audience. The first question being, so what? And now what? Is that second question? First question, so what? Second question, now what? So why is this important? Okay, so what and now what? So what meaning why should I care about what you have to say when you walk on stage? Even subconsciously, your audience is rooting for you always. Okay, an audience never wants to see a speaker fail. Okay, we just don't wanna do it. Um, but 
we do want to buy into you right away. Okay, so I always say start with the drama. Doesn't have to be dramatic. That's not what I mean. Start with the drama. Don't be the speaker that comes out and says, hi, my name is Brittany Richmond and I'm so happy to be here. Friend, we know you're happy to be here, otherwise you wouldn't be here. And we know your name, they just introduced you and you've been all over the promotional materials. So we get it. Start with the drama, put them in a story right away or get them to engage with you, ask a question, tell a joke, um, start with a prop if that's your vibe. Whatever it is for you, I challenge you to go look at some speakers online and see how they start when they come out on stage. You want people to buy into you right away and connect with you right away. And then now what? Now that I've seen you speak, what am I supposed to do with this information, <laughs> right? Make sure you leave them with tangible takeaways or, or takeaways they can move their business forward personally, professionally, whatever it is you speak about, whatever problem you're solving, provide the solution and how they can implement it into their life. And typically when people don't do this, it's very story heavy um, and they don't close the loop for you, right? So just make sure that you're doing those two things. So that's step two. <sighs> Pause. Breathe. Okay, let's go to step three, which is E. Expert establishment or establishing yourself as the expert. This is your product packaging. And these are the things that need to be your best marketing tools as a speaker, uh, besides a great talk, our website and a demo reel. They absolutely have to be there. Uh, people will ask them. You can go to mine. Mine is BrittanyRichmond.com. Um, you can go to some of our coaches, Rick Clemens, Dan Irvin. Um, I mean, there. Uh, gosh, we have so many. And you can go to just speakers, just Google speakers, professional speakers, and you're gonna find very, very much a lot of similarities in their websites. Let me tell you what they're gonna have. A picture of them, their name. You'll be able to tell right away that they're a professional speaker. So there's a lot of clarity there for an event planner. You're gonna, they're gonna be able to tell exactly what, what, you, what they speak about and who they speak to. So again, clarity and how, that they're a professional speaker and how to book them. That is, that's gonna be a pattern that you see in a lot of professional speakers' websites. Friends, did you hear me say clarity multiple times? That's because an event planner wants clarity. If you give them like your business website or your LinkedIn or something when they ask you for a website, you know what they're initially gonna think is, oh, I guess they're not a professional speaker. Maybe that's not what they do. There's a lack of clarity there. So make sure there's absolute clarity. What you also see on our websites is our demo reels. There's footage of us speaking. It is not our whole talk. It is a highlight reel. What does that mean? Think of like a movie trailer. They're not going to give away the plot in the movie. They're not going to give away all the good stuff in a movie trailer, but you are going to highlight. You're going to highlight certain things. Some speakers do music and that's it. Some people do a little bit of audio from their talks. I highly recommend that you go look at some different speakers, highlight reels and cross compare and see what works for you. Are you sticking with me? Oh my gosh. This is like a core workout. Like, talking like this. Um, <laughs> ah, okay, that's SPE. Let's move on to A, which is acquire paid speaking gigs. This is the work. This is where you live forever, friends. This is where we live forever as professional speakers. This is where the magic happens. Truthfully, truthfully, um, this is your prospecting. You know, this is, we're not in the business of going places and convincing them to bring us in to speak. We want to go places that we know they already book and pay speakers, right? So this is how we search on Google, Google's free. I would search things like high school leadership conference or college student leadership conference. And I would find all these places where my audience resides. And these are places that book and pay speakers, conferences, conventions, summits, associations, find them in your space, locate a decision maker, email them and start building and curating that relationship. We want to go places we know they already book and pay speakers. We want to fill a need that they have, right? We don't want to convince them like, hey, like me walking into my local high school and being like, you need to bring me in. You need to bring me in because my message will work here. Just because they'll work there doesn't mean they book and pay speakers, right? We want to go to the places where we know they already book and pay speakers. Every day I prospect, you'll see tons of, and tons of material about prospecting on our podcasts from Eric, Dan, Grant, a lot of our guests, including myself. You'll see a lot of it on Instagram, on the Sunday Shorts. Prospecting is king. People often ask me, what is your secret to getting booked and paid? There is no secret except consistency. And that's not a secret. That's just, it is what it is, right? Consistency in my prospecting 
is what gets me booked and paid, much like my colleagues here at the Speaker Lab that are speakers, as well as the other speakers that I know. Yes, we want to get into the referral space, but the prospecting never stops, okay? So that's S-B-E-A. Then we go on to K, which is the last step. I don't know why I'm getting all like K like karate. It just felt right, so hang with me. Um, and K is knowing when to scale. So to me, this is a, a when it is time uh, step, right? So it's not appropriate for everybody to do it right away. In fact, I think you should focus on getting as many paid gigs as possible and start listening to your audience. And what I mean by that is I have listened to my audience for a long time, getting ready to release my book. My colleague Dan is doing his first book. Uh, my colleague Jake just released his second book. Eric released his first book this past year. It's, it's listening to your audience, understanding their needs, and then putting out there the scaling options that we know they want from us and they're looking from us for from us. Just like, I mean, it's just like anything else. Like just because you want to do something doesn't mean your audience wants that, right? So get out there, get as many paid gigs as possible, speak and start to listen as to what your audience, how they want to continue to work with you after they hear you speak. Is it a book, digital course, digital products? Um, you know, what is it? Coaching. I mean, we don't know. Get out there and start listening to your audience. So that's how, that's the process of um, how to build, how to start, grow, or scale a speaking business is a speak framework. If you want more information on it, you can see it on our website, on our homepage. It's literally thespeakerlab.com. You can see speak to scroll a little bit. Um, you can get our book, which is the successful speaker. It has that entire framework built out in it's not a workbook, but it definitely reads like a workbook. So I definitely recommend uh, checking that out. Listen, no matter what we do, we always go back to the core of what works and it's the speak framework. And it has been tried and true for years, years and years and years. And is, it literally is the process that helps get me booked and paid. Uh, I have a six figure, over six figure year this year. A lot of my colleagues are in six figures plus. Um, some of my colleagues are in seven or eight figures at this point all repeating the process. So the wheel is there. Don't reinvent it, right? All right, friends, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions, post them below, and I'll see you on the next Sunday short. Bye.